thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. And let me start by saying that I'm very glad to be part of this discussion and how we can make sure UPR recommendations take effect on the ground through cooperation and capacity building. Because, needless to say, the whole purpose of what we're doing in this room is precisely to promote and protect human rights on the ground in member states. I would also like to say at the very outset that in our work around UPR and technical co cooperation, we are reminded that all states have human rights challenges and that closing the gaps between norms and implementation for all states is work in progress, never a job uh, done and an area where we can learn a lot from each other. So I'm glad to be on this panel with so many competent colleagues. I, I very much enjoyed listening to the OHCHR setting out precisely how uh, UPR recommendations have led to, uh, through their implementation, through to tangible change in, 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 in a long range of countries. And I'm looking forward to hearing also from the from UN Women and, and from UPR Info. On, on technical cooperation, let me also then express my appreciation to the mission of Thailand and to my excellent colleague, Ambassador Benananda, for their leadership on this file, uh, technical cooperation and capacity building. Norway is pleased to work with our Thai, Thai colleagues and other members of the core group on this. Technical cooperation and capacity building is a cornerstone of the work of the Human Rights Council alongside the mandate to address serious violations and abuses wherever and whenever they occur. And by engaging in capacity building, we empower individuals and communities to claim their rights and we help states to protect and promote the dignity of every person. And through technical cooperation, we can share experiences and knowledge, building and strengthening national and regional institutions and structures that ensure that human rights are protected under the rule of law. Technical cooperation and capacity building in the field uh, uh, is essential to improve the daily lives of people as we strive to ensure sustainable development, because clearly there is a strong link between human rights and development. Effective technical cooperation and capacity building are also key to preventing discrimination, margin, marginalization and conflict. And I'd like to, to pause a moment there because we have a record number of armed conflict for the time being, more often than not preceded precisely by human rights violations. So human rights promotion is conflict prevention. And that brings me to, to how human rights are closely linked with the two other pillars of the United Nations, peace and development, and how the three of them are independent and mutually reinforcing. While human rights are individual, they serve the whole of society and they are vital problem-solving tools that safeguard lives and livelihoods. By investing in human rights, we build just, peaceful and stable societies. And this is a key point for my government. Norway's development cooperation is anchored in UN Sustainable Development Goals and human rights. Among much else, we take pride in being a reliable partner to the High Commissioner, providing flexible and long-term support. On, on the UPR, uh, let me say that cooperation is also uh, at the very heart of the, of the UPR. It serves to bring us together in useful contrast, you might say, to some other parts of our work where we sometimes disagree. So the unique platform and, and peer for peer-to-peer -peer dialogue among states have often been called the diamond of the UN human rights system. And many of us will recall uh, the former perm rep of Argentina and council president expressed this sentiment. And I'm honored to tell you that I've taken over from, from uh, Ambassador uh, Federico Villegas as chair of the Group of Friends uh, of the UPR this year. And I'm looking forward to, along with the other members of that group, to polish this diamond further. The UPR process underscores that no country can assume that it has achieved its goals in the field of human rights. It is work in progress for, ev for all of us. We all have challenges. We must strive for continuous progress. And in this process, engagement with other states uh, is particularly valuable, both here at the Council, but also in our bilateral engagement. I, for one, look forward to Norway's fourth cycle hearing in November. To Norway, it is also essential that the UPR process, both when it comes to participation and not least follow-up and implementation, involves engagement with other stakeholders, civil society, human rights defenders, and national human rights institutions, among others, are key. They are indispensable for identifying the most pressing human rights issues and to make sure we have tangible improvements for rights holders on the ground. 
There can be little doubt that the UPR recommendations offer a roadmap and a yardstick for technical cooperation, capacity building in the field of human rights. I'm very glad, therefore, uh, for the many examples in the report prepared for this panel, pointing out how the UPR Voluntary Fund supports countries in the implementation of UPR recommendations. I'm also happy to learn that the UN system increasingly incorporates UPR recommendations in country assessments and frameworks and into programming, hence making the UPR, UPR recommendations important yardsticks. This is important if we are to mainstream human rights, uh, and we note in this context that the human rights advisors play a central role for the country teams and the resident coordinators. And with UPR regional advisors taking up their work, the capacity of the UN system will be further strengthened to make the most of the support offered by the Voluntary Fund for implementation. Let me end then, colleagues, by encouraging states to bolster the capacity of the Voluntary Fund for UPR implementation. I sincerely hope that countries that have not contributed to the fund yet will consider doing so, and for previous donors to consider renewing their commitment. Thank you.